We're still going to talk about A is better than B. Hey, John. Yes. Are, are we recording? Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's no driving gloves. It's, we're just going to be uh, a kind of a lighthearted show again. We threw uh, Sean and Derek into the mix tonight. We're just going to randomly go off. And I want to know, what's everybody's feeling on Stellantis? Stellantis? Or Stellantis. I don't know. S-T-L-L-A-N-T-I-S. Holy crap. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what you're talking about. So S-T-L-L what? S-T-E-L-L-A-N-T-I-S. By the time this comes out, everybody will know. Stellantis. Stellantis. Merge. FCA and Peugeot will be called Stellantis. Oh, that actually happened? I guess so. Six hours ago. That's a done deal? Six hours ago it was announced. That's the new name of the Chrysler Corporation. Okay. I have no (laughs) issues with that. But (laughs) a lot of people will. I'm sure Walter P. Chrysler really has something to say about that one. I mean, after the Daimler merger and then the Daimler exit for Chrysler LLC with – what is it, Cerebus Capital, and then we had uh, the Chrysler Group as Fiat was ac- once they acquired him, and then we had FCA, and now we've got, I guess, Stellantis. Stellantis. I don't, word, I don't know where that word came from. It's Oh, I have a, a full definition in front of me. Do you? Excellent. Why, why don't you in That would be fantastic. <laughs> The name's Latin origins pay tribute to the rich, rich history of its founding companies, while the evocation of astronomy captures the spirit of optimism, energy, uh, renewal, driving this industry-changing merger. Can I do, I'm going to do my best impression of Liz Lemon. What the what? What, <laughs> Is it like, what, what did all that mean? They don't even know what that meant. Okay, if, if you're going to do that impression, can I can I do another one? Mm-hmm. And the only comment I have to that is, ew, David. Ew. <laughs> ew. Ew. It will only be applied at the corporate level, and all the car companies, I guess, will be remain the same. So we'll still have Fiat, Alpha, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, Peugeot, and whoever else Peugeot owns. I was going to say, am I going to wind up getting a Stellantis Ram? I want a Hellantis. I want a Stellantis Viper. Uh, 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 yeah, a Viplantis. A Vi- would it be Viplantis or Stelliper? I go with Stelliper. Stelliper. <laughs> I was part of the whole touring around with Chrysler cars when the FCA thing happened. And all I saw was improved quality, much better cars. There were a lot of good things that happened when FCA happened. I don't know the I don't know the last time quality was used in the same sentence as Peugeot in a positive <laughs> overtone. <laughs> That's true, but maybe Peugeot yeah. is maybe Peugeot is the down market stuff. They do have some cool stuff. They have some cool cars in their in their lineup. And from a global standpoint, I mean they're a big player in Europe and the UK. Yeah, but here's the problem. They don't bring it to America. They might not ever bring it to America. And that kind of stinks. That's the problem. Bring the cool stuff to America. The problem with the company is that they're not bringing any of the cool stuff to the U.S. market. That's the freaking problem with Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler, you know, all that. Okay, yeah, they brought the new version of it's the, what, the one, 124 Roadster, yeah, right? The Abarth is... Yeah, you know, the one they're bringing the heritage back of the 124. The Abarth 124 is actually really cool. It's a cool car, and they brought it to the market, but they're not really bringing anything else, in my opinion. That's just a rebadged Miata, well, with slightly different body panels. It's a rebadged Miata with the Abarth 1.4 liter motor. It's got a lot more torque for stock. It's got a lot more torque than the Miata. I think it's actually better than a stock Miata. I've driven them back to back on road courses and autocrosses, and the Fiat is just more alive. Like it, it just feels like a much better car. And it doesn't have that damn bump steer that the stock Indy Miata has. It's the stock Indy Miata is a bump steer nightmare. Like it literally, when you turn it in, if you really turn it in, it just, it just rolls over and dies. And the 124 doesn't do that in Abarth trend. It doesn't do that. I haven't driven a base model, so I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, like I said, I lived through that with those brands or at least with the Chrysler group side of that. And then actually did get to play around a little bit with Fiat, with the the 500, the Abarth track experience, got to drive those on racetracks all over the place. I actually ended up buying one 
because I had so much fun with them on racetracks. Wasn't a great daily driver. Sucked as a daily driver, actually, for me, for my body type. But as a toy, the 500 odd part is amazing. It just makes you grin. It, it thinks it's so much more badass than it ever thought about being. It's just fun to drive. I really, I don't see, I don't see a problem with it until they show me that there's a problem with this. But to me, it's just like the Volkswagen group gobbling up everyone. Fiat wants to compete with v- VW. And if they're going to compete with the VW group, they have to start gobbling up other brands. It's the only way to do it, right? And, or am I completely bonkers? I am completely bonkers, but it's beside the point. Uh, I mean, it's the way it's the way GM did it back in, in the early 1900s. They just gog- gobbled up as many companies as they could to... You know, by Opel and Holden and, you know... <laughs> but even all the small U.S. companies that they bought, the little, Garford, did they... Uh, no, I'm sorry, they didn't do Garford. They bought... I mean, they just went around and bought up all the a bunch of the little companies in Cleveland, a bunch of them around Michigan, uh, to create what would become General Motors, and that, that's how they became an industry leader back then. So possibly that's the way this becomes an industry leader now. I probably wouldn't have picked a name that sounds so much like the lost city of Atlanta. Stellantis. Actually, we're going to be talking about the lost company of Stellantis, the Stellantis Scat Pack. Well, the last thing I'm going to say is. Now, we all know Fiat's been shopping for General Motors, Toyota, anybody with extra cash reserves. I, I can't quickly find out uh, how much cash on hand Peugeot had, but I imagine that's just another one of the cash grabs by Fiat. Maybe we can finally develop a new Dodge that, instead of just keep introducing things with Hellcats. I mean, that's how Chrysler designs new cars. Hey, we put a Hellcat in it. We put a Hellcat in it. Let's say this brings back your beloved Rampage, but it's on a Peugeot chassis. Are you happy? Or are you? I probably still wouldn't touch a um, oh, Stellantis product. Ugh. I think some of the stuff they've built is neat and wouldn't mind owning it. Did you ever ride in the Scat Pack? Did you ever ride in my Challenger? Uh, I don't think so. It's a great car. It really, it's a great car. No, I might have. I, no, I did ride. I did ride in it once. I've ridden in a couple Challengers. I've driven a couple Challengers. Remember, there was a purple SRT oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, going to buy. Car, yeah, I remember and, that. Uh, and they wouldn't. Uh, they wouldn't let me drive it without a credit that check was a and everything. Silly and I thought for, that for, was, for that yeah, car, yeah, so that I was more than silly. I I almost bought that Celine across the street instead. Well, we've covered, oh, we've probably spent 10 minutes on my topic, and we're only supposed to spend five, so somebody else jump in. We're only supposed to spend five? Great show. Great, 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 great show, show, everyone. Great show. That's, thanks for showing up. Appreciate y'all. Um, Let's wrap this up, <laughs> just like just like Stellantis. 10 minutes, and we're going to wrap it up. This is one of those quickie things. Everybody's supposed to get about five minutes. Two topics per person, five minutes each. Okay. Um, 30-minute show. <laughs> I'll go ahead and go. I I have to go ahead and say this, and I've said nothing but not necessarily derogatory, but I haven't been really hyped on the new Bronco until I saw the Sasquatch package. Thanks. Was that your thing? Thanks for taking my topic. That's your topic? Thanks. Now it's our topics. It's Appreciate our topic. <laughs> I'm glad you're I'm glad you're happy about that, Derek. So what are your thoughts on it? I hate it. Do you really hate it? Well, okay, I'll say this. It to me, it's styled better than the Wrangler. Which let's it's grown on me. Be honest, it's what they're competing with. Uh, it is styled better. It has the look. It, it's the retro look of what you know the Bronco used to be when it first came out. The first Bronco, not the big Bronco, not the Bronco Two, any of those, but the original Bronco. I just I'm not a fan of modern. I just I'm not a fan of modern. I don't like the Wrangler taking the doors off modern vehicles looks stupid. They're not designed to look right with the doors off. And I, I don't know. To me, it's just not a good look. I don't even care about the doors going away. I mean, that's to me. It's it is by far the best of the retro trucks that have come out. And, and like it's for me. And it wasn't this way up until about a week ago. And it's it's one of those things like every generation of Corvette, it takes about six to eight months for me to start appreciating the redesign, except for the Gen 8. The Gen 8, literally, when I first saw it, I was like, whoa. But C4, 5, and 6, every single one of those, since I've been really paying attention to cars, is taken a little while to grow on me. And the Bronco did the same thing with me. And I woke up about a week ago. And was hit in the face with the Sasquatch edition with the 35s on it instead of the 30s and the fender flares and the two door with the, the roll cage with the, the padding, the wrap on it and everything. And I had some friends when I was in high school 
that had the 60s Bronco two doors, you know, top off, roll bar, padded. It took me back and I was like, okay, I need a detachable face Alpine head unit in that. And I need some uh, some hanging seats in the back of it on the roll cage. And it just made me true, true. Made me remember when I was 16. And I was just kind of blown away by it. And I I when I when something does that to me, I'm always looking at it going, okay, why didn't I see that? At first, I don't know why it takes me with certain vehicles. It just takes me a little while to digest it. Maybe that's happening for you. Maybe, maybe literally you've already made up your mind. I don't, I, I don't. I will say I do like the Sasquatch package. It, it makes it look better. And there was another one and I, I probably wouldn't be able to find the post. There was another company that did one. I saw a friend put up on Facebook. It was kind of a powder blue color with a, a white stripe kit. Maybe you've seen it. I don't remember the company that, you know, there was a special aftermarket company that got one and they did their own tweak to it and it looked good. I'll say this. I mean, it's definitely, you know, and, and, and it's interesting to look at company philosophies in their design because, you know, Ford has chosen to go a couple times the retro design, uh, you know, pulling inspiration from the original versions of cars, you know, the Mustang got a much more retro look, the Broncos getting it, you know, there, there's certain cars they're bringing out and, you know, within the general motors lineup, you get Camaro having a little bit of a throwback feel to it. But I'll tell you, you know, Ford did much better with the Bronco than Chevy did bring them back the blazer. I'll say that because the blazer, I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't hold up to what, the blazer was back in the day. The Bronco. The blazer is a Camaro truck. Yeah. The Mach-E is a Mustang <laughs> truck. Is Yeah. I, I, yeah. So, I mean, I think they, you know, Ford did justice to the Bronco name uh, by doing what they did. It's just, I, I guess to me, it's just not my style. Maybe that's my thing with it. I can definitely agree with you there because I'm not really a truck guy. I'm not really an SUV guy. Or, or a truck guy at all. But if I were to want a truck that was a two-door off-road capable truck, I would probably look at the Bronco really hard over a Wrangler just because the Wrangler is so played in my mind. Like it's it's so played. And, and when the FJ came out, when the redesigned Toyota FJ came out, Natasha actually brought one of those home as a company car for, we had it for a month or so. I fell in love with that thing. It was, it was really cool. It was retro and cool for its time. I mean, that was God knows how long ago, how, how long did FJ come out 15 years ago? I have no idea. 10 years at least. It's been off the market for at least five. Yeah. It's gotta be 10, 12 years ago at least. Um, but yeah, the Bronco just, I don't know. It hit me wrong. And I think it hit me wrong because right out of the gate, there were like 2.3 liter turbo. And I was like, well, that's not a Bronco motor. That's kind of like six cylinder turbo in the GT. I, I don't dig it. I don't dig the GT as much as I should because of the motor. And I didn't dig the Bronco off out of the gate as much as I should because four cylinder turbo, but then you get to thinking about it and you're like, well, modern four cylinder turbo has more horsepower torque and really doesn't have the lag that I remember from my 2.3 liter turbo coupe back in the day. So there's no boost lag. The power's right there. It makes more power. It makes more horsepower and, you know, and torque. It gets better fuel economy. The thing probably gets damn near 30 on the 35s. So it's, it's probably a great truck. And I'm probably going over my 10 minutes. And I don't want John to yell at me. So we're... You're not at your 10 minutes, but do you realize this package you're talking about only comes with a 10-speed automatic? I know. And, and forget I'm your gas... Get your forget your gas mileage. This thing comes with a four four forty six to one rear end gear That's ratio. That's awesome. So you say that, but it's a ten speed. What are what's the final drive with that? It's going to be the same final drive as it would have on the thirties with the ten speed. More than likely, it's it's not going to be that crazy. It's still going to be drivable. I think it's still going to be dailyable, even with that four forty to one. It's it's a ten speed freaking transmission. It's going to be. <laughs> like up and down the gears constantly finding the sweet stop sweet spot but i'll yeah keep showing that pick Derek, because i dig the hell out of it give me that in a two-door so this is the one i was talking about that i saw that i actually liked and it is um the the tag from my uh, a friend of mine that posted this it's uh, and hopefully i say this right max lighter motors did this 
Max Leiter Brothers Customs. I, I know nothing about them. If, if they listen to the show, uh, great job on the Bronco. It looks like they're a company that restores vintage Broncos, and they did that to the new one. That is the one that I have seen. I actually, I like the looks of that that Bronco. That is, to me, that that's a good look. Um, some of the other ones, that that, that to me looks like they were trying to make it look like an FJ Cruiser and failed. Exactly. That's basically the view that I first saw the thing, and that's what soured me on it. And now all of these Sasquatch picks and the orange and what you just showed are starting to come out. And I'm like, oh, that actually ha- – it's not devoid of style. The, the pictures of the test mules with the camo, I mean, obviously they're doing their job with the camo and they're hiding it. But we've been around this long enough to where we can kind of – pick through a lot of the swirly camo vinyl crap that's on a car and we can kind of see what's going on behind the scenes but with the bronco it just looked a box it looked totally devoid of style like the cyber truck looked better than the bronco to me when i first saw it but now it's like oh yeah it's retro badass man i dig it Derek, you're up uh, uh i took I his topic really, i don't really hear <laughs> up that much that's so pre- i heard something about you on cars yeah touring europe as a uh orchestra oh jazz band member uh, jazz That's, trombone player. what happened yes. Yes. thank you no, thank uh, you yes my jazz trombone days yeah. uh, obviously sean hasn't listened to your fabulous interview with mark green i have i haven't evidently yeah he didn't listen to my cars yet. i've literally i have pete down here from pittsburgh we have literally for like 18 hours a day been doing nothing but getting this chassis done no i haven't but i will and i i'm sorry Zamboni. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, I was on cars. Yeah, uh, well, we will have Mark Green on our show. Uh, he has agreed to come on. Uh, oh, you muted, Derek. <laughs> you muted yourself, dude. No, John, it said the host. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. I'm looking for that annoying knocking sound and seeing where it went away. And it went away when I muted you. I don't know. It must be background noise somewhere. I'm not sure what it is. I apologize. Probably some ant in his microphone trying to get out. It could be actually. Um, Anyway, or I don't know. It might be in my desk. You said we're going to get Mark Green on the show and I can, I can talk. I I think it actually sounded like we will have. And then then you just uh, show. Because you kept muting me. I can uh, talk uh, to him about mini trucks because I understand that's my role. Yeah, that's, I was, that's what I was going to bring up till you muted that's me. That's my role on the show. The mini truck guy. I was trying to cram through a whole lot of stuff, John, and it just stuck in my head that one of your big things you always talk about is trucks. I could have called you the van guy. I might have preferred that. I've been watching a lot of Criminal Minds lately. There's nothing wrong with being the mini truck guy. Just own oh, it. Lord. Because quite honestly, John, you are. <laughs> well i'll be honest i was looking and it was in my price range i found a uh bagged and smooth it just needs the interior finished um a zuzu the other day for about so basically what happened Derek, is you pushed him over the edge he's now he's 80s john again exactly it, which is not it's not it's not a horrible thing well now that i've uh distracted Derek and taken topic number two for me and i kept it brief what you got going on, Derek? Where, where, where's your topic? I took where's it. Topic? Oh, I never commented too much on the Bronco. I don't like it. Do you really? I mean, you, you just flat out don't like it. I flat out don't like it. I don't think the styling's that good. I've I've traditionally always hated retro vehicles. It does retro, and it does retro a little bit wrong. They now I'll, I'll give them I'll give them this. They gave them a they did a better job than Chevrolet did with the Blazer. They weren't trying to do retro. But Chevy wasn't going, Chevy wasn't trying to go retro with the Blazer. But I will say, I agree with John. I don't think retro is ever, I don't think any retro car that has ever come out looks good. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, go back to Fiat Chrysler, you know, the the Challenger. Uh, you don't like the Challenger? I always, the Challenger, the, oh the Challenger, God. the Mustang, no. the Beetle, the T Bird. Uh, the the yeah. only one that might have got the it right was oh the T Bird was horrible. The 05 to oh what six uh, Ford GT. Oh five oh six. I think GT. They, that one yeah. that might have been the only one they've really gotten right. That was that was. I okay. would much prefer to have a PT Cruiser or an HHR because they're retro, but they're not trying to copy anything. Right. You know, I think if Dodge or excuse me. Um, Stolvantis, what, what is that the name? Stolvantis would go ahead and take a Ram like everybody's asked him to for years, and 
make it into a Ram Charger, but do it with the exact truck you're selling and just weld that shell. You on want that. a little red wagon? Don't. Uh, I would be. I would be fine. You with want that. stacks? I can't figure out how they do stacks unless you do a. Um, uh, you've got to do a step side bed. I don't see that happening. I, I really don't. It could totally be done. I mean, we had a uh, 04 Lightning that was it was kind of a cool truck. It wasn't really a truck though. It, that's the problem with those things is they're they're trucks, but they're not. I saw on social media the other day uh, somebody criticizing a guy because he had a Lightning that was lowered. Aha, see the, the mini truck lowered guy, but he was pulling. Uh, he uses it. I, I, my point keeps. He uses it driven. for his uh, landscaping wow. business, and he had a trailer on the back of it and riding mowers, and mm-hmm. and they were crit- you know, the guy who posted it said, "Oh, this is a horrible life for a Lightning to live," and everybody disagreed with him. I mean, it's at least out there living it's yeah i being a truck you know god bless that guy because ours i lit we literally bought it and it was more than likely i mean there's no way that i can prove this but we bought it in 07 or 08 and it had 2500 miles on it it was a 2004 so it was probably like the lowest mileage lightning in the country i would think and the dude we bought it from was like, he was an SVT collector and he bought like everything new that SVT did. And then he'd buy it and he'd garage it and he'd do a couple motorsport add, add-ons to it and just leave them. And somehow we ended up with this thing. And I literally bought it to tow simulators around the country with and got it home and was like, this is too nice. <laughs> this is like, it's just, it's too nice to, to do that with. And I couldn't bring myself to do it. And we ended up selling it because of that. Cause I just, I couldn't use it as a truck, but if you want to relate that to the new Bronco, I'd beat the poo poo out of one of those. I mean, that, that it looks like it's designed. You for couldn't it. bring yourself to use the lightning as a truck. I really couldn't. I used my little red express as a truck. I, I mean, more power to you. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I put one thing in the bed. I put a, I was at road Atlanta. Someone crashed a star Mazda. That's how long ago it was. It was still star Mazda. Someone crashed one. I got the front wing off the car to bring home. It was a little tweaked, and I was going to hang it up in the slot car track. It used to be up on 31. I put it in the bed. By the time I got home, it had scratched the bed a couple places because it had come out of what I'd wrapped it in. I did a terrible job, but it scratched the bed in a couple places, and the bed literally was factory paint, no line X or Rhino line or anything, and it scratched it, and I was like, holy crap, I've just scratched the bed of the lowest mileage lightning in the country, which literally doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. Who cares? But in my mind at the time, I was like, it's just too nice. I can't use it as a truck. And then I was really mad at myself for trying to use it as a truck, which is stupid. I know it's stupid. It's a total neurosis on my part. I totally get – I'm, I'm very impressed with someone who would take a vehicle like that and just say, screw it. <laughs> and use it as God and the manufacturer intended, he says, and then he shuts up and lets someone else talk. Yes. Now, I've already derailed everybody's. I have no idea how we got on lightnings. Said something about a step side bed and, you know, Sean's got to tell a story. About is that it. what it was? Oh, is that what it was? All right. Ah, uh, yes. I, I mean, I think somebody said that to me earlier. Well, speaking of, speaking of myself, uh, not only was I in cars, yeah, but by the time this episode airs, uh, my episode where I guest did a guest appearance on the Collector Car Podcast uh, with uh, Greg, uh, Greg, 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 Greg Stanley will have aired. Uh, hopefully some of our listeners uh, will have heard that or uh, maybe some of the people, the listeners that listen to Greg's will be listening to No Driving Gloves now because I did mention the podcast there. You know, I also was forced to pick my top 10 Corvettes of all time on that podcast. And that was, uh, I'm sure I'm going to be getting some emails in regards to that list. Uh, now he was the, the, ec- uh, actually it was the not Eckler's wide body, the four door prototype Corvette, the, uh, Corvette used in Miami vice that looked like a Ferrari Daytona. <laughs> yeah. What did they call it? The one, the one from the one that Mark Hamill drove in a Corvette summer. Is, a green, is that a Greenwood? <laughs> is that, no, the Corvette Summer one was just built. It was just crazy. <laughs> it wasn't like a movie. movie kit or anything. That was somebody with too much fiberglass and too much fiber, too many fiberglass. Cal- was the Callaway C12 in there? Because that, ooh, ooh, ooh. No, and that's what I talked. What I talked about was it was it. It's almost an impossible list to make because 
you've got the production cars, you've got the race cars, you've got the aftermarket cars, you've got the concept cars. There's so many, it's almost impossible to pick the 10 best Corvettes or the top 10 Corvettes of all time because Corvette has been, I mean, we're at 67 years now. So much has been done in that time. It's um, Let's see here. It's really difficult to try to do that. The 53 Corvette. Obviously, that was the there. Six, the 63 split window. Yep. Uh, the uh, 67 big tank cars. Nope. The, um, I'm forgetting what I want to go to there. Um, I had another one. I would say the ZR1, the 90 mm-hmm. ZR1. That was on there. I'd have to put the C8 on that list. Yep. I would have to put, we did the split window, we did the big tank car. I would probably have to go with the 72, I would almost say any, but probably a big block car because it's the final edition of the front rear chrome bumper cars. So like the ZR1, the 72 ZR1. Yeah, this is, yeah, L88 or uh, ZR1, LT. L88 was over by 72, but L88 was on 60, 60. I picked the 68 L88 rather than the 67. That's what I, that's what I was thinking of. So, yeah. The 69 was the, isn't that the last of the steel bumper cars or something like that? The, or is that? No, that's the 72. No, 72. Front and rear. 73 still has a, a rear. No, it still has a front or rubber front, rear. Front, sorry. The steel, the yeah, front. steel bumper cars I actually liked. Those were cool. Yeah. I looked for I looked for a seventy two for years, and I like I said, I've told the story before. As I was at Bloomington Gold one year, and there was a freshly restored seventy two big block. This is ninety four, ninety five, blue black interior, black top. I wanted a red car, red interior, red top. So I walked away from it. It was seventeen seven. I could have bought it, walked away without any negotiation. Yeah. Oops. Talk Oops. about ones that got away. What's that worth now? So not only is not only is John the mini truck guy, he's also the fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that was me. I, th- I thought I'd, not, but I'll, I'll share it with you, John. We can be the fools. It's perfect. <laughs> we can be the fools who rarely agree. We've agreed way too much lately. We have to end that. It's we really do have to. We have to put a, a total end to that. Ah, uh, we'll figure out something. Yeah, I know. I know. Now you got me. You know, I mean, you got me thinking about Corvettes, like what Corvettes I'd want. And I, I've never been a Corvette guy at all. I, but I do. I respect the hell out of the performance bargain that they represent. Oh, 95, 95 pace car. That was the purple over white, wasn't it? Yeah, and that had some weird <laughs> graphics on it too, didn't it? Some very interesting yeah. graphics. Yeah, like yellow in it with checkered flags and stuff. Or am I thinking of a different car? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're you're of the right car. Yeah, yep, yep, that's the car. Tune into which podcast did you say you were on, Derek? Well, it was Cars, yeah, yeah. Uh, which has already which aired. Awesome. But well, both of them will have aired by this time. Uh, and then the Collector Car Podcast with Greg Stan. Find out on the Collector Car Podcast, Derek's top ten. I just randomly named mine. Derek obviously agreed with me because he's just he's just sitting there nodding. I'm the mini truck. I'm the mini truck guy. I understand Corvettes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you get the LS swap. You understand Corvettes from the LS swap perspective. I believe there was some LS swap talk on uh, one of those. Speaking of LS swap, I did have that 90 Azuzu pickup with a 78 Corvette motor See? in it. Boom. So it's lowered mini truck. See, ties in. I was going to say, I just saw, or saw this morning, some companies offering a free intake manifold setup for the first guy that does a LS swap to the new Bronco, which I would already think has been done for SEMA or something. You know, I'm sure Ford's given some people. That's it's it's brutal. That's so brutal. So, okay, Derek, what's your, what's your final topic? Oh, I was, I was just going to talk about how I have no clue what, you know, month or day it is or anything because (laughs) there are no car shows happening. There's no car events going on and it sucks. Everything keeps getting canceled. I know. I, the last thing I went to was Amelia Island and then everything shut down and I have no clue what's going on in the world now because I have no calendar to follow. I'm not going to get into that because then it's going to get political. (laughs) Giant show was supposed to go to next month that like literally got a call yesterday. And they're like, we don't really know whether it's going to happen or not. The state's starting to close back down, and they're already being, they, you know, they're already being told that it probably isn't going to happen. And it's, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I agree, man. It's like I really want to get back to it, but Carlisle did Chrysler's, yeah, or, uh, Chrysler's at Carlisle. Yep. Saw that. I had a lot of friends that were there. They were they were making me jealous with shooting me pics and stuff. And it looked like a great show. I mean, Carlisle's always a great show. Every show that Carlisle does is typically a great show. I don't know why people go there for Mopar because it's 193 degrees there this time of year. But yeah. Yeah. I will I will say I've I've got, had the good fortune. Lance Miller is a huge Corvette guy. So I've gotten the chance to meet Lance, gotten to know Lance. And, uh, you know, he runs most of those, his company runs most of those, uh, shows there in Carlisle, uh, just a, a fantastic guy that, you know, I mean, he does the, uh, it's just amazing. I mean, yeah. Corvettes at Carlisle is the big one. Everything he does. He's just a, a genuine car guy and it shows. Well, the Millers on the grounds that it, all those shows take place on, they, they've been known for their Corvette collection. And a couple of years ago, Corvette did Carlisle blue, which was an absolutely gorgeous color on, it had to be the C6s, wasn't it? Was that the, the sort of like slate think so. blue? It was like a slate powdery blue. It was a really light blue. Yeah. Then they had a grand sport, sport version with so. that on it, I think. Yeah, like it's yeah. That that was yeah. really. I, I, the last Dude. time I was at Carlisle to judge in that, we ran out of time, or Ed was going to take me over and tour me through the the collection and the museum. So next time I go up, I was supposed to travel a lot this year for my business. Um, obviously, that didn't happen, and now the business has kind of pivoted, and I don't know when the next time I'll make a car car show. But yeah, it's been a kind of a downer year, and. I'll say I'd like to get out and go to some shows and go to even some local ones, but I'm, I'm of the uh, pro mask people and it seems a lot of car collectors aren't, I don't want to get into it more than that. I know I'm wrong to half the country and I know I'm right to half the country. So Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a touchy topic, man. It's definitely a touchy mm-hmm. topic. I just, I set some people off today on Facebook by bringing it up. I'm going to go ahead and we're entitled to our opinion. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap everything up, let everybody know that we've went ahead and stepped it up a little bit. If you want to give us some feedback and you want to potentially hear your voice on the podcast, 802-321-4638. Again, 802-321-4638. That is a Google voice number. You will go to a voicemail, uh, but feel free to leave any comments you want, et cetera, on the show. To make it simpler, the reason I chose a Vermont number for this Alabama Southeast-based podcast is that's 802-321-4NDG. Just remember that. Oh, wow. So it's 802 4 no driving gloves. So. Oh, we fancy, y'all. We fancy. Wow. And remember, when you're leaving your message, we try to be a family-friendly show. Yeah, we try. But then you invited me to come yeah. on. And well, things went downhill. I apologize. I didn't invite you. When Pharaoh was on, we we said no swearing. It, we tried to keep it a family show. Farrah, three three swear words. I think Sean was like six. So, <laughs> <laughs> there we but, go. No no driving gloves. Facebook. No driving gloves. Instagram. www. no driving gloves. dot com. You can find us on all the podcast catchers. Go to the website. There's links to everything. Videos for the show are on Patreon now. You can join Patreon for five bucks. If you do it, you know, beginning of the month, mid month, you can almost get a month for free and keep cancel in case you find our mugs just too attractive. You know, all of a sudden your wife starts watching the show with you and things like that. It could happen. Stranger things have happened. It could happen. <laughs> with that, I, I'm going to bed guys. Oh, oh, one, one last, one last, one last thing of big news I saw on Facebook that got me really excited is NHL has uh, released that the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs are coming back, so Zambonis will be returning, guys. It's going to be awesome. It's a new NHRA class, too. Zamboni stock. It's perfect. Yeah, and we're going to use a blueprint engine. <laughs> In our Zambonis. We're going to LS swap with blueprint engines, Derek Zamboni, and put some wheelie bars on it and go take over the world. Are you in? He nods. Sub thirteens, baby. Nods. His head. <laughs> now, for all the uh, listeners out there, Derek's doing a head bob very slowly. He's literally turned into a bobblehead. <laughs> That's it, guys. We're done.